everybody. I'm here with my brother from another mother, Nick Young of Velux Training Group. Uh, we've been spending a couple of days just training. That's kind of what we do. We get together and try to get better. Um, and I thought it'd be interesting to get some of Nick's thoughts on dry fire. He's one of the few people that actually does the dry fire piece. He doesn't just talk about doing the dry fire piece. There's a lot of talking and not a lot of doing, but I know he's doing it. I see him do it. Uh, we actually have a lot of conversations about what we're doing in dry fire and how that's affecting our live fire training and all that stuff. And you guys that are on the dry fire program, you know my thoughts about what I'm paying attention to while I'm dry firing. Uh, it's not necessarily the drills in the dry fire, um, fire, fire, dry fire program that are interesting. It's more like what we do through them. Like what are we learning every time we get in the dry fire room? What are we paying attention to? How does that transfer to live fire? So you know my thoughts on that stuff. It's not a collection of drills. It's not a book on like, hey, do this cool new drill and you'll get better. I mean, you could do all the drills in the world and still suck, right? You can, if you do it wrong, you'll continue to be wrong. Um, so in addition to what you've heard from me, I wanted you to hear from somebody else that's actually seen massive benefits from dry fire. So to begin with, maybe like Nick talk about what are the kind of things you're paying attention to when you're in your, instead of like your favorite drill, like that, that's yeah, yeah. less interesting to me, but more yep. like, what do you pay attention to? How do you get the most out of your dry fire time? Because it doesn't have to be hours and hours, although if you're structured correctly and you're paying attention, you could do it for a long time. But tell us like, kind of like, what do you, what do you pay attention to? Yeah. So like you hit it right on the head, right? Paying attention is key. Yeah. Like just going through the motions of like, Hey, I got 50 draws in today. Doesn't mean anything if you're not paying attention to like really important things, yep. right? The things that I pay close attention to typically change based off of the things that I'm currently, you know, working on in my training or things that I'm starting to notice in my training. Uh, I, I think like here recently, like you and I shooting together, like what I'm noticing in my live fire is what I'm going to start working on and dry fire a bunch. But like leaving out of a position and I'll notice like bad points on shot number two on the target that I'm leaving out of the selection. Out of there, yeah. And so for me, like what I'm going to focus on is like very, very much like sticking on the target on a very particular spot on the target before I leave that position. More or less like trying to be in the moment with that target for as long as I need to. Yeah. Uh, and so I think like paying attention, like if that's the thing, again, picking a really small spot, making sure the dot is on the target for as long uh, as, you know, you perceive that the dot should be there. And then moving softly, you know, when you, when you need to, or when you can. Yeah. Like, so if you're contributing to exiting per se, like we do quite a bit of movement in the dry fire program, which I think is valuable. And so even you can pay attention to like, okay, I'm looking to the spot. Okay. My sights are on that spot. I think like that would be a confirmation level that's appropriate for the difficulty of the target. But also as I'm leaving from it, how much crazy movement am I adding? Like, would it be an appropriate amount of yeah. movement of my gun while I'm leaving this to still yeah. get the points? I and, need? and you bring up a good point. Like, I think, I think so many times we talk about entering into a position softly. A lot of time, and you have to leave out of a position softly. Yeah. Like, if you're rolling out of a position, it's not just, like, blasting out of it, right? Yeah. Um, there was some stuff that we had set up today, uh, shooting through a port, like shooting a stacker through a port. I was definitely trying to roll out on yeah. a lower stacker yeah. that had a little bit more A-zone showing. Um, I think you guys were staying planted. Yeah. I, was, I was being a little bit more risky, but, like, leaving out of that position, I had to step very, very softly, right? Um, the other thing with that was like my eyes had to stay on the spot. Yeah. If you just look in the general direction and like <clears throat> you guys will notice this, like doing transitions, right? If you just look in the general direction, you'll watch the dot just kind of streak off the target. If you're paying attention, <laughs> if you're paying attention, yeah. right? Um, so like if you're seeing that things like that, it should be like, it should cue you in on what you're doing like immediately. Uh, and so, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so we keep saying the word paying attention like it's like a hot word. It's not a hot word. It's actually what you need to be doing if you want to make progress in live fire. People get stupid on the internet. And they're like, that's the hot word of the month or whatever. And then they'll be like, doubles will be hot words. Like, let, they're not hot words. It's what people are doing that are interested in getting better. So I just in, scroll by those. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> you know, I, I hear these people like that don't practice, don't train. And then they're like, 
Okay, that's my excuse. I'll just stick on it. Anyway, so the paying attention piece, like, I think it's the m the major benefit of being on the Dry Pro program is that you're getting a video of somebody saying to you, hey, man, when I do this style of training, this style of drill, whatever, I am noticing this, that, and that, and I'm putting some conscious thought on this, that, and that so that I can get the most benefit. And when I go to the live fire sessions, I can see a direct transfer of skill. Like, I am able to transfer it over. I mean, even three or four years ago, I had every book on the planet on dry fire. Anybody that had sure. anybody, I had all the books, and I still was like, man, I did all the drills, but I don't see a lot of benefit when I go to live fire. And so that's, that's why... When I figured it out, I was like, oh my gosh, there's these things you have to do in dry fire yep. to make it transferable to life. So maybe can you talk about a couple of those like just conceptual things like oh, yeah. I must have this in dry fire in order for me to transfer that benefit to live fire. Because I think, and this is going to be like super top secret, like, you know, you've never heard these things before. Ready to go. Yeah. Uh, so for, for the love of God, when you dry fire, please make it like it is in, in live fire meaning like tell me more you, that's really interesting if Crazy. every single time you press the trigger and dry fire you're like man the dot didn't move you're dry firing incorrectly you're not mimicking what happens in live fire and that's when you see people like they'll say things like man my 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 uh, dry fire time is nowhere near huh? my live fire time uh -huh. my live fire time is, is like three seconds longer on on el prez <laughs> like what is happening it's Crazy. like it, because you're doing things in dry fire that you don't do in live fire. Dry fire should be a way to check up on your live fire things. And what I mean by that is like you should be trying to mess up in dry fire like you do in live fire. So that paying attention thing again, that phrase, right? While you're, while you're doing things in live fire, you should be paying very close attention to, to things that are giving you trouble. That's the stuff that you should be working on in dry fire. And so when you get home and you, and you start dry firing, try to mimic those things. Try to mimic the way um, not only it looks, but try to mimic the way it feels. I think that's super important, yeah. right? Tell me more about like, that. I, a good example of this, uh, like when I was trying to get less firing hand tension, yes. like, like, I don't know, two, three years ago now, yeah. I was working on this pretty heavy. I would put up a big target in front of me. Because at the time, I was like, I really don't like that because speed is involved in that, right? I have to go very fast. That gave me anxiety, yeah, right? Tension. The only way that I found that out was through live fire, mm -hmm. okay? But I'm going to take that back and dry fire. And so what I would do, I would draw the gun as aggressively as I possibly can. There you go. And There's I would shoot a build drill on Concept number one. So I you're would doing press the trigger, speed even in dry fire. And I would press the trigger as fast as I possibly could. And I would draw the gun as fast as I possibly could. And what I saw was like, like the dot all over the place. And it's like, all right, now that there's not bullets in the gun, right? It's not costing me anything. Now I can pay specifically. attention to the, what is causing that. And then you start applying cause and effect. So I'm like, okay, number one, I am not used to the feeling of that speed. So okay. I'm going to keep going and keep going to inoculate myself to it, right? Yes. Number two, what I'm going to do is start feeling what does the grip feel like? Not just like, hey, what are my hands? Uh, you know, Fabio said, put my hand here. Yeah. This so and so said, do this with my th like. Not that stuff, right? What are the type of pressures that are uh, that you're inputting into the gun with your hands? Are you putting different pressures on the gun? And when I was doing it, I'm like, yup, like I feel this hand clamping, and my hands start doing very different mm -hmm. things. As soon as that like tension or anxiety starts to come up uh -huh. about the specific target, uh -huh. and so doing it and doing it and doing it, it's like I start to pay attention to it. And I'm like, all right, dummy, like loosen this hand up, grip this hand really hard, and just keep the consistent pressures uh -huh. across the board. And so then you draw the gun, and then I can bang on the trigger, and then the dot just does this in the center of the alpha. And it's like that's the stuff that you can bring to live fire and that's the stuff that you see like huge gains on. Yeah, that's productive, right? Like you're you're not treating your dry fire like more carefully. Like people that sit there, rack the slide and like carefully press the trigger every single time. First of all, in dry fire, and I don't know, maybe you disagree, but for me, maybe maybe and I think I've increased this number. It used to be maybe like no more than ten percent of the time do I actually 
press the trigger. Maybe I'm getting like to 20%, but the sort of things I'm doing in that is like trigger breaks at speed, like actually like manipulating the trigger aggressively to test the durability of my grip, even during dry fire, right? Most of the time, I don't even press the darn trigger. And people sitting at home like racking the slide and like surprise breaks yeah. and all that stuff. It's like maybe the first week of dry fire, like maybe you, got, maybe you just bought a gun. Maybe it's like the very first time you shoot and you're just trying to like get used to how your trigger feels or something yeah. like that. But like there's no time where I'm like carefully pressing the trigger in dry fire. Yeah. So for me, it just depends on what I'm working on. Yeah. Right. Like that firing hand tension thing. Uh, you know, whether you're shooting build drills or you can put up designated targets sure. in, in your live fire. Yeah. Like, there will be times where I will just add layers to it, and I'm like, all right, the thing that I am going to try to assess and pay attention to is firing hand tension. Okay. Is my grip doing different things? And, it, like, especially on transitions, like, this is very common, at least in my opinion. Yeah. You'll see people do transitions, and then they loosen the grip 100%. on the transition, and then 100%. as soon as they look at the target, it's even yep. worse. Or after a reload. Like, even worse with the rifle, like the rifle comes off the shoulder, they look yep. at the target, and then you'll watch what looks like over confirmation, but they're actually pulling the stock. Anyway, yeah, um, yeah, there will be times where I will just like press the trigger, but it's only to isolate that one thing. Sure. Like, how does my grip feel? And like, do I have the same type of pressures while I'm doing the thing? But I would agree, the majority of the time, I typically don't because. Like what I'm looking at is grip, mostly vision. Yep. Uh, mo mostly vision. So, but would you say there was a time? Like, yes, I agree. Most of my personal dry fire time is spent on transitioning the gun from target yeah. to target. There's some gun manipulation stuff. Like, yeah, I'll do some reloads and whatever. That's sort of like some movement stuff or whatever. Would you say there was a time where you invested in making sure your grip structure and pressures were like? Always the same. Like, I feel oh, like I sure. spent, like, I still, like, every now and again, I have to check it to make sure that I'm being honest. Yeah. Like, if I'm not smoked in, in the first 10 or 15 mm -hmm. minutes. But, like, there was a time where for me to make that normal, I feel like that was the focus. And it was months of that. It was, like, every time the gun came out, I my support hand, I wanted to feel like it was, it was cutting the blood off my fingers. Yeah. all white. Like, you know, and I felt like my fingers were getting smashed into the grip. Yep. And I wanted that feeling because I know that when I start shooting at speed in live fire, that's what it is. So I wanted to do that more time in dry fire. So, like, do you feel like you, like, I'm you probably don't pay attention to that anymore as much because it's, like, natural or normal, more yeah. normal than before? So I think I've paid attention to it so much that when it changes, it's almost like getting, getting oh, whoops. You're like, whoops, it's, that's not dude, It's like an uppercut. Yeah. Like, you idiot. Yeah. Like, why are you doing that? Um, I wouldn't recommend everyone talk to themselves like that, but I, I typically get motivated when I talk about like freaking dummy. Like, yeah, why do that? You yeah. just messed up your grip, and like that's, dude, that's a gimme. Like, just keep consistent pressures on the gun. But that's a gimme. And that's like one of the major concepts that I think most people screw up. Yeah. In the reason why your dry fire doesn't match your live fire, or your dry fire doesn't support your live fire, is that you're holding the gun in a different way 100%. than you actually hold the gun when you're going at speed. 100%. And then people start talking about, like, I have this slow fire grip for an accurate shot, and I have this fast fire grip for the, for, the, for the speedy shots, and I have my dry fire grip. So you have, like, 16 different grips, when, yeah. like, really, I have one. My goal, I, I should say, yeah. my goal is to have one. Now, can you screw that up? Sure. Like, you draw the gun, you focus on a million other things, and boom, the gun goes out the first time. Like, yep, that's not right. And then you start clamping down, you start doing other things. But if you don't have a volume of time where you're holding the gun correctly, and like, you might, you might start holding the gun tighter with your dominant hand yeah. because you're like, oh, I don't like the way that looked subconsciously, yeah. right? And well, then you start clamping down the gun like this, you start pushing on it because it doesn't behave right. So, how about this? Hold the gun really tightly with your dominant hand and dry fire. Oof, yeah. See what happens. Oh. Right? This will give you an idea, right? Yeah, right. Like a very good, a very clear yeah. idea. Yeah. I'm going to grip the shit. Sorry. You can That's cut okay. on that. Nah, it's fine. I'm going to grip the shit out of the gun <laughs> with, with, with my firing hand, and I'm barely going to grab it with my support hand. Yeah. yeah. Very unproductive, right? But by doing that, you'll be able to see like, oh, like that's how the gun behaves. Oh, that might be what it looks like in live fire for and, you. And do some trigger breaks at speed when you don't have a support handle. Do like, it the boom, wrong boom, way. Boom, 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 right? Yeah, and then, and then you good. see and you're like, oh, 
that's not the way I want to see. Yes. I don't think that's productive or something like that. Man, for a while, I, I did trigger control with speed and just like completely off the trigger. Mm -hmm. Like finger at the very, very front of the trigger. Today, I did that in the 100 and round thing. It, it, dude, it's like one of the, that's a thing that you would never want to do. Right? Like you would never shoot a 25 yard target and be like, Boom, boom. I mean, maybe you, you wouldn't would. choose it. But maybe you would, but like, damn, that, that's not my first choice. You not know, going to go very well. And so, like, but like doing that in, in dry fire, right? Doing things kind of incorrectly will bring things to light that you might not have It'll make it more before. obvious. You might not have yeah. you know, noticed that, that you did that one thing before. And it'll also give you a chance to like see like, yep, that's what wrong looks like. Because 100%. that is just as important as knowing what good looks like. Yeah, yeah. And in that's the, not talked about. In the, in the dry fire program, like, we do things like, yep, stare at the dot. Like, look in the window, put it on the target, stare at it, and then try to move the gun off the target. And watch where your eyes go. Like, you're following the gun like this. Like, that's what it looks like when you're yeah. doing it wrong. Like, you got to at some point just see it. Mm -hmm. And then go, like, hard, like, really focus. You have n The gun's not going off. Nothing's happening. It's dry fire, right? Stare at the target. And then move the gun away, and then you just watch this like this thing. You notice it. You don't even watch it. You notice this thing disappear. Okay, that dot, that red image goes away, and you bring it back. And you you don't have that focal shift or whatever. Like just so seeing it wrong and seeing it right. Sometimes it's like, holy crap, that's what it looks like yeah. when I screw this up. You know that kind of thing. Uh, and, and by doing it wrong, I'm not saying like, hey man, I would spend don't spend a volume three weeks on it. <laughs> doing everything yeah. wrong. Like, just notice it. No. Yeah. No. Like. Yeah. You know, check up on that stuff every now and then. Like, if you see yourself doing something in live fire, right? A good example of this, uh, there's a partial at 15 yards. You're doing transitions. That would have been easy today. Par <laughs> partial at 15 yards. Yeah. It's giving you anxiety, right? You look at that thing and you're like, damn it. I'm I don't like the way that looks, yeah. Right? And then you see the dot do one of these. Check mark, yeah. The, the check mark, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, all right, that's, that's bad. I'm shoving on the gun. Maybe... You should try to replicate that in dry fire mm. and see what that actually feels like in your hands and what it starts to look like. Because then, then it's like, all right, now I have an opportunity to fix that. Mm. No, that's really interesting. Like, Not only do we do dry fire to support the live fire, but we're, the, the live fire is informing the sort of thing that we want to work in dry. Uh, like, So it's like a, it should be a loop. It's not like this for that. It's. It's both. They're they're like it, the dr live fire is informing what you need in dry fire. The dry fire is helping you build some skill so that your live fire goes better. Like it, if you're paying attention, you're actually like uh, developing your your own program. Like so, yeah, we have a bunch of stuff on the dry fire program. You like pick and go. Yeah, I need this right now. Like I'm trying to develop these things, so I'm gonna pick these drills or whatever. But the entire time, it's like goal based. Like right now, you're like maybe what, like what are you working on now? Like. You have nationals in three months. Thanks for reminding me. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm working I have nationals on, in six weeks. So. I'm, I'm working on a lot of movement stuff on targets that are very difficult to hit. And so, like, you have this dry fire space up here. You bit large. You, you're, like, blessed. Like, you have a big room where I can do my dry fire. And you can set up environments where you have those nasty partials. That's it. And you're trying to move in and out of those things and paying yeah. attention. to Things that I'm trying to focus on, like, trying to keep my eyes on a spot and not trying to... Try not to look in a general direction because you'll see the dot just streak off of those, um, especially like on transitions and moving in and out of positions. Like you'll find it'll be very difficult to hold the dot on the target if you're just looking in a general direction. So like that's stuff that I've been really uh, paying close attention to. And I, I think you're right. It's like you need dry fire for the live fire stuff. Um, like if you don't dry fire, I just feel like you're a complete dummy. Like you're you're oh, man. you're leaving stuff on the table, yep. and and by all means, like if you're going to nationals, don't dry fire, please, please don't. <laughs> like no, I would love to squab with you. There please, is, please don't. And there's a, there's some people that will say, well, I live fire so much that I don't need to dry fire. I think you're leaving some on the table. Like, it, it, like it, if you're if you're live firing a hundred thousand plus rounds a, a year, you're right. You may need a lesser volume of dry, but there's things that you do in dry fire that you're. Yeah. You allow yourself the opportunity of noticing and paying attention to things that you cannot really honestly do when the gun is going off. Dude, I have a range 70 yards from my house. It's beautiful, and I and love it so much. There's, I don't know how much ammo down in the yeah. in the place. There's a chunk. I'll say that. There's a solid chunk, like 
several thousands and thousands of routes down there. I still drive by. Yeah. I drive by on the freaking ranch. Yeah. Like, if I see something, and, like, and because to me, it's like, man, it only makes sense. Like, if you're doing something on the range and stuff starts falling apart, it's like, all right, I am no longer going to spend money on yeah, this. Yeah, like, removing. Like, I'm just going to stop. And I'm going to drive by it. Yeah. See what it looks like. See what it feels like. And then I'm going to c- commence my life by it. Man, I couldn't agree more. Like, for me, I've just recently started to increase my, my round count. Like, last year, I did 30,000 rounds. This year, I'm going to do 40,000 rounds. That was, that's very abnormal. That's three times or more what I used to shoot. Um, and for me, I had to earn the privilege of shooting more. That's the way I looked at it. Like, like that. I need to earn the the money into town the the, the pews yeah. I have to earn that like so the dry fire the volume of dry fire that I have done and continue to do earns me the the right to to watch the gun go off and eventually yeah you got to shoot the gun so you can watch the gun go off while you're looking for the target you're like yep that's what that's what it's doing that's what I'm seeing whatever but to leave that piece out where you're like yeah I'm just gonna do it all live. Man, you're never gonna do enough reloads live. No. You're never gonna do enough like like quiet transitions without like all the other stuff that comes into transitions. You never get so chance. much you leave on the table. You really don't get a chance to pay close attention to the very very like minor things, the very granular things, especially the visual piece, mm. especially the transitions the and things. Like, man, if if you're not doing, if you're not like. You know, really focusing on the the visual stuff mm-hmm. in in dry fire with transitions, like, dude, you are just leaving stuff on the mm-hmm. table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it. Is there any words of wisdom for like for somebody that's like, okay, um, I don't dry fire. They might be new or they might be like, you know, whatever, pretty seasoned. They're like, I don't dry fire. I'm not really into it. I don't really understand. It. I think it's boring. Like that that person, right? Give them like. Your ten minute, just do do ten minutes of this, like three to four days a week, like for like a month. Like, here's your assignment. Just do this for t- <laughs> like, and then and then call me in a month and tell me like how much you've improved or something. Well, like number one, it's only boring because because you're not paying attention to like things that are going to make you better, right? Uh, the usually the people that that say it's boring are the ones that are like doing you know a draw click. Oof. Put the gun back. That's painful. Draw. And usually to beat a part time round. It's One like, then, ba blah, ba blah. So it's, not, it's like, ah, it's really boring. It's like, well, no shit, because you're not paying attention to anything. Yeah. You're not like, actually all you're doing anything. is just like going through the motions. And so, start paying attention to. Well, let me let me reel back just a little bit. Figure out what is important. Right. Yeah, I base. would say, grip and vision need to be obsessed over. Mm-hmm. And that obsession never ends. I don't think I, like I don't think it ever ends. There is stuff that I do with my grip now that I didn't do six months ago. I agree, Same. and it's because I'm constantly looking at it. Yeah. There's stuff that I do with my vision now that I didn't do three months ago. Yeah. Right. I've See, got awesome some really sure. cool. Yeah. I got some cool stuff I'll tell you about after this. But uh. Yay. Like, yeah. Like you need to be paying very close attention and trying to assess what is actually happening this is going to make the live fire better it is right pay attention to your vision pay attention to your grip like how does the dot land on the target if you just want to do draws right draw the gun how does the dot land on the target does it do this when it lands on the target or does it just kind of like go straight to the spot that you're looking at these are things that you need to be assessing and that's a very very basic you know so if you're spending your 10 minutes three to five days a week on like dry fire, you're paying attention to how your sights arrive. Uh, just to summarize, yeah. you like the things that even you, on the draw. Yeah, even yeah. on the draw, paying attention to how your sights arrive to the small spot you're looking on the target, and then making adjustments to make it arrive more softly, more predictably. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and then would you say like maybe paying attention to how the grip is around the gun while you're like moving it around doing transitions? Like absolutely. I mean, that could be ten minutes of like really productive time. Man. That's it. Just like yes. paying attention to, like how my sights arrive and what my grip is doing when I'm moving the gun around. Yeah. Like. And then applying cause and effect. Okay, tell me. Okay, I don't, I don't like that one thing. Okay, what's causing that? Let me fix it. And if you don't and have I a solution, this is very general. But yeah, like, yeah, but if you don't have a solution, you can start trying things, like exploration time. Okay. Or, hey, Nick from Velox Training Group, <laughs> you yeah. told me to drive because I know you answer a ton of people. I answer a ton Do of people as much as I can. Answer a lot of them with with either a voice message or video. 
That's super uh, generous. Dude, if if people send me stuff like, hey, I'm trying to drive for, like, dude, so many times, like, I'll stick a freaking belt on, set a camera up, That's and, like, generous. I'm going to send you videos. Of, because, like, I don't know about you. I do know about you. You're, like, if you're into it. Yeah. My wife is happy that I'm up here talking to you about this and not her. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, I, I'm going to talk about it either way. Yeah. So, my wife would sit there and be like, yep, yep. But really, she'd prefer me to call you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, what a treat to have you. Thank you for sharing your, yeah. your stuff. And, like, obviously, if you haven't taken classes from Nick, I don't know where you live under a rock and you probably need to fix that. But Nick's got a bunch of classes all over the country. Absolutely get in one of his classes and grab as much knowledge as you can from him. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you next time.